Hello, it's Mr. Egg here with my latest video, and on today's video, I've got a special git, uh, sorry, guest, and he's come with his t-shirt with his sperm count on. Say hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. So, if you liked the video today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give us a like. Larry's here, and for those people who don't know Larry, if there's anyone out there that doesn't know Larry, Larry was formerly bar manager at Secrets. Secrets? You left Secrets and you went to Baby Dolls. And that's after you left Baby Dolls and went to Secrets. We did a kind of a swap. We did. Okay. So we just walked into Soy 15. This motorbike you were talking Interesting about. Interesting motorbike. I got here in 19... Well, I, li I came here to live in 2003. Okay. This motorbike was there in the, this exact spot. Wow when I arrive and it's still there. It hasn't been touched, hasn't been moved. I mean, it's not so exciting, but we're talking about what, uh, 17 years? And, and how many times have you tried to steal it? I can't find anybody that's got the right battery to get it started. <laughs> it's got a really old fashioned, uh, it's got a chombery plate, but it's, it's the old fashioned way that I used to do the number plates a few years ago. Well, so. you know it's old because it's not put on with zip ties. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Actual screws. Yeah. So it's a motorbike that's even older than you. Yeah, believe that. So, this intersection is uh, the famous crossroads. Should, should we have a walk? A lot of mem. Yeah. Are you walking this way? Great story about this little bar. Ah, the old Cat's Corner. Let's have a look. This is uh, for those of you just to orientate yourself. So we've got Soy 15 going, kind of in an L shape, and then Soy 14 kind of going in an L shape, and they meet here. And this is where you used to meet the girls from Baby Dolls after work. This little bar here, the guy that owned it, Paul, was a great guy, Fantastic super guy. guy. Yeah, but he got his rent increased by like they wanted fifty percent more for rent, and he told the landlord, he said, "You can't believe it. I'm not doing any. I'm not doing any business. I can't afford it." And she said, "Well, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it." The only time he's ever been busy is when there's F1, yeah. and when there was F1, Correct. you couldn't. You had to stand in there to watch it. And it the toilet. Packed. And the toilet always and did the good toilet, business. The toilet did well. Five bar, ten bar, and he used to do, I think he said a few hundred bar a day. Yeah. 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 So he's in there one day, F1, and the landlady hasn't been in the bar in five years. Who walks in on F1 day? The landlady comes in and she, <laughs> the place is packed. And Paul's trying to tell her, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. Do you know what? That is so true. When my landlord comes in, I'm always praying, oh, please, let me quiet, man. Let, let, it see, let me see it really empty. But yeah, that's funny. And, and you know what? I, I hope that Paul's watching. Maybe he's watching back in the UK. Good guy, Paul. Yeah. Is he in the UK? He, oh. was, up, he was up country in farming chicken. No, 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 no. I think he's, he sold that. Uh, and I think he's back in the UK. He was doing some work. Uh, oh. So uh, if you're up country or if you're... Hello, Paul, if you're watching. Anyway, Good guy, mate. Paul. Yeah. Good guy. And at the, this, this bar opened only about... A month ago? Well, he has another one that was the big easy in, in one oh, of the complexes. Come on, come on Larry. This guy, wants, this guy wants to know if you've stolen a motorbike this week. <laughs> he, he had another bar in, uh, what's the complex? Is it the Simon, Simon complex? Bar complex, but the one right towards Soy 16. Right, and I think yeah. that bar is closed. Oh, though. man, it was rough before COVID. It was really yeah. rough before COVID. So. And I, to be honest, I've never seen this bar really busy, but it's fitted out nice. I mean, it really looks nice. Yeah. I think, you know, if it was just a little bit bigger, maybe they could put a pool table there, it would be, be, it would be better, but yeah. There's some, there's some quite nice girls that are there. Right, let's have a walk towards, have you, have you been down to Soy 15 before, Larry? Once or twice. Okay, let's, let's walk and talk. <clears throat> so when, I, I remember, I, my first memory of you was on the Secrets Forum, and, and you were just absolutely legendary on there. <laughs> um, and then how did you go from being somebody who, contributed to the forum and moderated the forum to somebody that um, that basically became the manager of the bar. I was a big poster on the FLB uh -oh. board. Uh oh, we're gonna get run over. Sorry. I was a big poster on the FLB board and one of the owners was the manager yeah. of the FLB bar. Yeah. And so he contacted me and said, how about moderating a little section of the board? Well, I didn't at the time because there was a gentleman called Tab Mule. And he had yeah, Patty yeah. a chat, yeah. and chat and secrets were like this. It was it was like oil okay. and water. Okay. So he disappeared, the chat guy, and the secrets owner got a hold of me again and said, 
come on over now because you're not doing anything. Right. So at first he gave me a small section of the forum to moderate. We call it the steam room. Uh oh. And my I mean... first thread that I started was, have you ever had creamy crack? <laughs> <laughs> True story. So, uh, go, go, no. Sorry, I don't so then, you. So then, then I came over and did that. And then Steve, who was one of the partners. Ma Martini? Martini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He decided so, that he really didn't, it wasn't, didn't fit his lifestyle. So he got out <laughs> and I was offered a, uh, Whoa! I was offered the daytime manager's job, which turned into pretty much yeah. all the time. So when was the first time, did you go to Secrets Bar before it was open? Did you see it being built? Walked by every day. Yeah, okay. Every day while they were building it. And it was amazing because it was, you know, in Thailand, everybody builds, the, the people who, who start, they do a shitty job, and then the people that come in behind them cover their job up with another shitty job. Then you got the tile guys that come in and cover that. <laughs> I, it happens. Every trade covers themselves. The first time I went in Secrets, Steve Martini, Martini. Showed, showed me around. And I remember him being so proud of the fact it was the only bar in Pattaya at the time that had aircon in the, in the, what you call bathrooms and we call toilets. They had aircon in the kitchen for the kitchen staff. Unbelievable, yeah. I mean, they really had a high spec there. and. Um, um, but I remember the bar was about that high. They, they were building, they were building the bar with breeze blocks, and and it was that high. And and Martini was so Steve was so proud of showing me around, and so was uh, the owner as well. Should we should we go should we go and take a look? Yeah, let's go. When was the first time they actually went to the secrets building? Oh. I mean, it's behind us there, but probably six months before it got okay, built. Okay, okay. What's a note because. Um, Derek was telling me a story about when they put that, um, you can see it, it's the, the, the phaser, the electric phaser. Wasn't oh, there a story about that? Yeah, we were gonna, uh, they were set to open and then all of a sudden the electric company came and I guess they did their meter checks or whatever they do. Yeah. And they said, this transformer isn't gonna work. It won't work. So Hilly at the time, I believe it was Hilly, yeah. a gentleman named Bruce, late, rest in peace, late, nice late, man. Late, yeah. he, uh, he got a hold of somebody he knew in the, in the PEA and they purchased the transformer and got it put in just a couple of days before wow. the opening yeah. or they wouldn't have been able to open. Actually, the hotel opened a couple of days later because the transformer couldn't provide enough electricity for, for both. For all the aircon, yeah? Yeah. Okay. But it was, uh, it was uh. a scary thing, but we got open. Never forget that night. So that was 2006. So, so between 2003 and 2006, you were just like a regular tourist, a, a regular expat? Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, but, but you said, uh, I remember you telling me earlier, you was on the FLB forum. I, I never knew you on an FLB. Long time. Is that Patty, Patty a Talk or the FLB forum? Well, it's Patty a Talk now. Now, yeah. When Patty a Pete started it, yeah. it was the freelancer board, yeah. then the FLB board. Okay. And uh, I was real close, to, uh, well, Peter and I, not real close, but we're friends. And uh, I, I saw Pete about uh, two days after he reopened uh, the, the, beer garden. the beer garden. Yeah. I wish him luck with that. He doesn't, he doesn't come out much. He, I mean, he's no. an absolute legend in his time, but he, never, he just doesn't come out. I think he saw me in Baby Dolls maybe two or three times yeah, the whole time yeah. I was there, all Lovely the years guy, I was man. there. Lovely guy. Great guy. Yeah. Absolutely great guy. So then, was you apprehensive about becoming a manager? Or? You know, I wasn't because it was never work for me. I, I never thought, I mean, I was fortunate because the owners had a, a time manager and staff. So when there was a problem with the staff, yeah. I directed it to my time manager, and only once in a great while I had to get involved and step in and, and sure. make a decision sure. or do something. Yeah. And and I mean, it was it was almost too good to be true. You know, it was it was just. And, and tell us about the first few months of Secrets because it was just went bananas. I, I, it was just when we opened the bar, the railing in front of Secrets. Come on, let's let's go and have a look. Below. There were about seventy. I think we opened up with close to 70 girls. Wow. And the Mama San, mostly responsible for that is Mama San Newt, which is now at Dow House. Yeah. And yeah. she worked for us at Baby yeah, yeah, Dow's. Yeah, I remember. But the girls were just lined up out here. And when we opened the bar for the public and the public came in, it was amazing. It was like we were giving hundred dollar bills away. Unbelievable. I there remember. were people that were in there a half hour and they said to me, Larry, I can't get a drink. And, and we had so many service staff, but it was everybody was just too busy. Yeah. And one of the owners, the actual original brainstorm of it, 
smart man actually. He says, you know, Larry, if people come in and can't get a drink and they leave, that's, that's the reason we want them to leave because they're gonna wanna come back and yeah, see sure. why yeah. the hell they couldn't get a drink. Yeah. You know, what made it so special? Just, just on a side note, do you ever remember um, Living Doll Showcase? Uh, Ken's Place. Ken's Place. Yeah. And do you remember they used to put a sign, like a, a sandwich board outside that says, oh, we're full, come back later. Peppermint did the same yeah. thing. But sometimes I, I said oh, to the doorman, it's okay, I, 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 I know the owner. And I walked in and there was nobody in there. It was just like a hype, a hyper up thing, just to hype the place up. But in secrets, it really was absolutely packed every night. We used to, I mean, I, I I think, in all honesty, the first couple of years, it was almost not even a low season. No. I mean, and you know, I was naive. I mean, I'd only been in Thailand for three or four years, and I thought to myself, well, we're going to be like this year round. I mean, come June and July, hell, we, you know, <laughs> we're going to be that busy. And of course, that never Didn't happened. Didn't quite happen that way, no. Yeah. But uh, I had good times there. I mean, uh, I was taken care of early in my career there, and thanks to them, I'm comfortable now. So, so th there must be some great stories about oh. the girls inside the bar. Um, I remember you telling me a few um, back at, at when we were talking earlier at Le Pub. <laughs> you know, I don't, the, the girls in, in, in scooters, I mean, or secrets. We had a, a, a customer from Australia, and a lot of people know this, and he came in and he dropped almost a half a million baht in one night. Uh -huh -huh. And he took, he, he took six or seven girls to Phuket, flew them there, right. stayed in five-star hotel, yeah. brought them back. I mean, he would take a girl and say to the girl in the morning, okay, for a tip, do you want an iPad or do you want an iPhone? <laughs> I mean, you know, he bought a few motorbikes, but I'm wow. still in touch with him to this day. Yeah. His wife is one of the, the lead uh, real estate agents in Australia. So a lot of guy, a lot of people that are watching would remember that story and, and that guy. So it's kind of got a happy ending because his life's kind of back together. Yeah, but what people don't know is he put money aside in annuities for his kids. Everybody said, oh, he's throwing money away. Yeah. He put money aside for the kids. I never met this guy. I, I, I never saw him. I if was, you, I was you, working at... If you zoom up to the balcony, I yeah. don't know, because of the light. Yeah. He was staying in one of these rooms. And he went upstairs with 30,000 baht in wow. thousand baht notes and just threw it into the street. He just threw it into the street. People were going crazy. I mean, people wanted to drink in the bar and they couldn't get one because all the service staff will say, the hell with this, we're going to get the money. Bartenders, everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. B who works for you now. Sure, sure. Well, when there's thousand yeah. baht notes coming through the air, B's a quick guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the fastest I've ever seen him move, actually. Yeah, yeah. So the hotel, was you a man did you manage a hotel did you no uh i mean if nobody was there i you know i took care of the problems can i tell you a little story about managing the hotel sure the number one problem in the hotel was people locked the safe and they didn't know how to open it and when they first opened secrets they must have put the same safe in every room because it was a certain brand of safe and I got a pass, like a, a, pass master, a master code for that, and I could, I could get in. But gradually, when safes didn't work, they used to replace them with a different brand or whatever, and so there were all different rooms had different number of safes. And a customer used to come, for example, a customer would go to reception and say, uh, can you say to the manager, the safe, I've closed, all my stuff's in the safe. And so I'd sort of turn up, hello, I'm the manager, and uh, say, oh yeah, can I, can I take a look at the safe? And I'd, I'd get the serial number it of the safe. It was a different one. Right, yeah, I'd get the serial number of the safe. Like the, the, the manufacturing, what it was called, you know, um, the Acme Safe Company model number XXT. I'd then say, oh, excuse me, sir, I need to get the uh, passcode for this. I'd go down to the, the office, I'd then get on YouTube, and I'd put that brand number in and then like how to open one of these safes. And it was usually like with a knife or a... Or a, a potato? <laughs> yeah, see that. Or, a, or, a, or a credit card. And then I'd go, uh, I'd go back up to the room and say, uh, yes, sir, uh, excuse me, there's a security um, issue. Uh, would you mind stepping outside while I enter the number so I don't wait to see the number? So you beat the hell out of the safe to get it open. And it was just off YouTube. Well, a guy on the forum, <laughs> a guy posted on our forum, he don't said... Don't tell anyone. He said, I won't, uh, I won't use the safes in secrets because uh, Larry and I'm sure somebody else knows how to get in there, would know how to get in there. 
and I had to post back, well, it's three o'clock in the morning, you've got a seven o'clock flight, you can't get your passport out, no safe company's gonna open, you're not gonna get anybody away. Yeah. So if I can't get it out for you, well, how are you gonna get it out? He said, well, I still really don't trust. I said, well, you know what? Every time you go out, put everything in one of them big damn rolling suitcases and take it with you everywhere you go. You don't need this safe. I mean. I Wasn't there a story about somebody who tried to check in with an animal? Yeah, that was a, a, running, a running prank, so to speak. We, we would tell people, and the, the beauty of this is, most of the people I told believed it. So I don't know if I sold the story right or they were just not real bright. Wait a minute. You mean it's the not true. story's not true? What, what about the woman who gave birth on, on, the, on oh, the play table of oh, baby dolls? Is that not true as well? That's not true either. Oh, no. Twice he's got me but, twice. but I would tell people that a gentleman came in with a goat, and when the receptionist told him you can't check in with a goat, he said, it's only a little bigger than a dog. <coughs> she said, well, you was can't he, check in with a dog either. Was he from Wales? Middle Eastern. Okay. So he gives me his passport, and while he's doing that, he lets the leash go. The goat takes off. He chases the goat down soy 15. I chase him down soy 15. The receptionist is chasing me down soy 15. And I tell this story, I must have told it a hundred times. And every time I tell it, people go, wow, I can't believe it. But they believe it. Yeah, and as soon as you go, they go, I can't believe Terry Larry's told me that shit story about the goat again. <laughs> he told it me last year. But the, the story that you told about the woman giving birth on, on the play table at Baby Dolls, you used to say to people, if you don't believe me, go That's in there and, and look, you can see blood marks. And I, I went, I, went, I was looking for them. They would come in and I would say to them, Ricky and I were in this, and I would say, look, I, I know you don't believe me. I know you don't believe me. But when the baby was born, they cut the umbilical cord because some customer wanted to bite it. <laughs> they cut the cord, they wrapped the baby up, and the go-go girls took turns dancing around the stage with this newborn baby. And these people are going, no. Well, yeah, it happened. So I would tell that story at Secrets, and they'd rush over to see Ricky, and Ricky would go, oh, yeah, yeah, she gave birth right <laughs> over there. And, and Ricky added to the story that given the birth wasn't bad, but it's getting all that afterbirth out of the corner. <laughs> the corners of the mats was a bitch. It was bad. It was there about eight years and it, it just, you know, we fell out a little and, and it happened. And so by the time I get to the bot bus, I get a call from Terry. You're not working, you're hired. <laughs> Should we go and see where you got hired to work? Sure. Come on, baby, let's go.